All right, we are bleeding cool. We are talking with Scotty Young. How's it going, man? It's going good. How's it going for you? Like that that being the first thing right there, Middle West. Yes. First trade is out. Yep. You guys are up to issue eight, right? I think issue eight just came out, yeah. yes. So, and multiple printings for multiple issues. Yeah. So, one of the things I heard you mention to somebody right now, you have the first arc set up for how many issues? Uh, the, well, the first story, I mean, mm -hmm. the, each arc is six issues, but right. the first major story that we're telling will probably end around 18 okay. issues. Um, and hopefully, uh, you know, we have plans well beyond that, so hopefully everybody uh, stays on board with us and wants to take the ride and checks out what else we have in store for that world and Abel and his, uh, his kind of family that he's putting together. Well, everybody seems to be really on board with it because it's it's not just second printings for issue one and issue two. You had second printings for issue six yeah. and issue seven. And right. it's like, that's not normal. It really is not normal. When they told me we had a we were going to go back to print on issue seven, I was like, wow, that's uh, that's very flattering. I was, <laughs> I was very excited that people are enjoying the book that much. Now, one of the things I know you like you've worked on, obviously very everybody's very familiar with your young Marvel covers. Right. Um, you've been writing Deadpool, mm -hmm. but I hate Fairyland and Wizard of Oz, more personal projects obviously. Right. And Middle West to me almost seems much more of an homage to Wizard of Oz than even I hate Fairyland was. It's interesting, you know, people people say that and it's I don't see it? Or you I actually, it's not there for me. Not, the, um, not intentional, but not intentional. I mean, obviously, there's the Midwest, right? Yeah. Um, so there's a setting there, and there's a tornado there. Yeah, the tornado. So, <laughs> you know, obviously, there's going to be some ties. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's, you know, the Wizard of Oz has the, the concept of, um, you know, a group of people coming together and going to search out some goals. And I think, you know, that's an age old story as well, yeah. you know? Um, so, I mean, I, I can see where that is. It wasn't in my head. I mean, it's probably not going to not be able to be in my head since mm -hmm. that was a book that was pretty important to me for a long time. Yeah. Uh, career wise and just when I was a kid. But, um, but you know, it's funny. I had, I didn't even think of it like this, but, um, it wasn't until, um, I mean, I, I probably thought of it as Lord of the Rings or, or never ending story more than I thought of it as Wizard of Oz. But then somebody came along and was like, yeah, but wrench. I was like, oh yeah, he, I guess he is kind of the Tin Man. <laughs> like it didn't even occur to me, you know. Like eventually, like all oh, these connections. But again, that's I'd say that's a pretty normal part of the creative process. It is. I mean, you're gonna have there's gonna be things like that are tied up in your in the fabric of who you are as a creator that you're not even gonna know is there. You know, like I, I've always said, um, one time, you know, I had looked at Sam Keith's Max in years and years and years, and mm -hmm. um, I was looking through it years ago, and I, I I realized like, oh my gosh, the way that I've always drawn grass came from this like I and I didn't even know that because I hadn't seen it in 20 years and but the outback it just yeah just like it's so to my head but that image is really ingrained if not from the comics if the M, the old MTV right, series exactly, yeah. had those those sweeping scenes that lasted for like two three minutes where you're right. just standing there with the wind blowing in the jungle and right that kind of stuff now and Deadpool you're wrapping up with issue 15 uh, yeah 15 is gonna be uh, our last issue of right. our run on Deadpool me Scott yeah, and I don't think I, I don't you're, you're you're great and your Deadpool runs been great but I'm pretty sure Marvel's not retiring Deadpool when you're done with it yeah. no there, <laughs> there's some cool stuff coming up for Deadpool I mean I'm sad to be leaving it because it was a really really fun project but um, it really I really did it to myself I pitched another project um, that I wasn't quite sure would get that everybody would like um, so it, in, a, in some ways I was like oh I'm just gonna throw this out there but I'll just keep writing Deadpool for the next couple of years and um, I pitched it and they really really liked it so uh, that got that they got when I put that on the schedule and once I started to look at my my workload um, something had to give um, and so I was really excited about this new project and at what? Marvel I'm assuming right? Marvel yeah because you don't have to pitch to yourself I mean no, I know yeah I know loosely you do have to pitch to image just basically like this is the new book we want to do kind of thing but it's yeah I, yeah I still pitch to image for sure and, and uh, you know I've been I've been doing this for a really long time so normally I'm gonna have something I, I kind of understand what's gonna fit and what's not and right Eric, you know Eric and everybody of image and, and Jeff and uh, everybody in cat and they're really really great uh, mm -hmm. people to s sound soundboard off of so um, well nowadays most of the I would say some a lot of the upper echelon people in Marvel people that you either worked with when you were coming up or people that you knew from then right yeah that's the other thing too like I've been at Marvel for almost 18 years so um, it's like it's scary to think about sometimes <laughs> it's really wild <laughs> uh, so yeah you know pretty much we've all We've all come up in the company together, you know. Yeah. Uh, CB and I have been friends. CB Sabolski is the editor in chief. Um, he and I have been friends for 20 years now. Um, 
So it's, it's kind of cool for us to all kind of be coming up together. And I assume there's no plans at all to stop the young peppers, right? Not as, no, not, <laughs> not, not to my knowledge. Um, everybody still seems to enjoy them. Everybody still shows now, up in the store to buy that's one of the things, like, 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 literally my son just asked about this cover. Like, like who is this character? Right. Do they just send you photo references for some of them, or the most, or you probably have a pretty, pretty good knowledge of a lot of the Marvel characters, I do but have, not encyclopedia. Right, obviously. I do have a pretty good knowledge of everybody. Um, obviously when we have new character designs, um, and the other good thing is they give me a lot of leeway. Like, you know, if we're doing a, you know, if you're doing a book and, you know, this is this new costume or whatever, like, a lot of times they'll be like, yeah, but this classic costume is cool. And they're like, yeah, it's cool. You know, for your cover, it's cool. <laughs> they give you a lot of leeway. Yeah, there's a lot of freedom there because at the end of the day, you know, we're going to get a lot of use out of these. We're going to make pins. We're going to make shirts. It's right. Like, well, like this cover, for example, that's, a ver I mean, it's obvious what you base that on. Oh, yeah, 100. After George, after yes. Perez's cover. Because I'm assuming that's the cover that when you were you were young, you read it and like, oh, that's... I read it, and of course I'm doing, you know, I'm doing a cover for Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. This is a famous, famous Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> yeah. Gauntlet. And, and if you've noticed over the years, I've not done that many homage covers. No, I, I wanted to, I wanted to make sure that I didn't fall into that. I yeah. love homage covers, yeah. but I knew that it would be very, very easy yeah. for me to start doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and then that be all I do, which is going, yeah. oh, I'll make an homage cover, but I'll make them little. Yeah. Um, so I really tried to stay away from that. In, unless there was a really, really strong retro, and in, in a way, a joke. If you yep. notice, the baby covers to me are a lot, or the young variant covers are there a lot. There is, but they also usually tell like some kind of story, even if there's right. a joke to that story. Right, so I, I am usually, I view them more as like almost my version of a comic strip than I do, uh, you know. Now, how did the, the tale you did in the Fantastic Four come about? Uh, that was just Dan and, and Tom reaching out to me and asked me if um, if I wanted to do a one-page comic strip, and Dan had a you know a, a joking strip written, and I was like, yeah, that'd be cool to be a part of that. You know, the Fantastic Four is coming back for the first time in years, and that's still one of my absolute favorite covers that you did. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I love um, you know I love Dan, and I absolutely uh, adore Sarah Pacelli. Um, she's just an absolutely brilliant artist, and so I thought oh, that'd be cool to have a page in that. And so. Yeah. Now, even though you do a lot, I mean, these are, I would say, you know, quote unquote, we'll say joke covers at times or sure. kind of off. Your depictions of realism, like the way you draw yourself, like, okay, there's one in here. Like, I would, I'm very curious how this cover came to be. <laughs> well, that's, uh, I can't show that one on camera, so that's yeah. why we're, that's So why this we're, is Matt and Chip. So we're doing the Sex Criminals 25, which we are not going to show on not camera. Not going to show on camera. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Almost did. <laughs> that is um, Matt and Chip. But your likenesses of them are, I've met both of them many times. And well, they're, they're both close buddies of mine, so. Um, and, and they are, they're just perfect. Yeah, they're both really close buddies of mine, so I, uh, they've been wanting me to do a Sex Criminals cover for a while, and <laughs> then they started doing those, you know, triple X covers, and so I figured, oh, what, what? And you weren't anybody that was worried about off being off brand or anything for that. No, I don't. You know, and in fact, I think that's the that's the funny joke of it, right? Yeah. Like, the funny joke is like the baby cover guy is. Well, and it was Polly. Draw, yeah, drawing. And a, nobody had covers. Right. It is. What's that? Nobody had any of your covers. Uh, we're just doing an interview real quick. So it's super sorry. No, no, no. Really, fine. to be honest, it's not. The, the to be honest, personal injections people like. Okay, cool. I'm sorry. No, no, not at all. No, I, yeah, I've heard that too. Like somebody said that they went over there and they couldn't find anything. Yeah. Which is weird, right? Exactly. Well, well after the video, I'll, we can discuss that because that's that's what seems to be an Ace Comic Con thing. Okay. <laughs> so, but anyway. Um, anyway, so uh, where were we? Oh, so we were talking. Let's get back to Middle West. Okay. So, what was the initial pitch on that? Like, did you send it to Eric? Did, did, who, who, who did you quote unquote pitch it to, I guess? Um, yeah, it was just Eric. Okay. Um, Middle West is something I had started kicking around, and um, I had thrown out there before. I, you know, I had told him that I was, uh, I thought I was ready to be kind of in Fairyland. Mm -hmm. You know, I was going into volume four of that. I, you know, it had been about three years of that. Okay, and there's one thing we talked about. You, you still, the anthology, maybe something like that you might do, but nothing to plan right yeah, now. Yeah, just nothing to plan right now, but yeah, I definitely have the desire to... Um, uh, Torture Gert more. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think that is a really fun world. I just needed a break mm -hmm. um, from the grind of writing and drawing a monthly comic right. and writing other comics. So it's like, there was just a lot going on. Um, and I kind of just wanted to, I know this sounds kind of artsy, but I just need to fall back in love with drawing a little bit, drawing interior pages. So sometimes you just take a break, regroup, um, and I'm, I, I just ordered tons of art supplies, so I'm like, I, like when I get back, they're in boxes waiting for me when I get back home nice. from this convention, so I'm really getting the itch to draw something again. Um, but yeah, so definitely an anthology at some point, you know, where I'm going to con some of my buddies to 
come in and do some do some work like Emmy Lennox and Ryan Otley and, and maybe so, but, Fabio and Gabriel. Maybe none, yeah. none of these are for sure. But yeah, right. But these are people that have talked to you yes, about it and how much right. they like the book and right. stuff like that. So now the main obviously coming off I Eat Fairyland, there's obviously quote unquote some some similarities. Like it's coming to Middle West, but Middle West is one much more serious. Right. So I mean, although in a weird way, I would say much more all ages. <laughs> um, and I hate Fairyland. Sure, for <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, I mean, Bully Wars was definitely all ages. Yes. Um, but Middle West is... And no plans for any more of that right now? Not yet. Um, we really, really, you know, we really wanted to take a run at all ages books. Um, and we had a plan. I mean, we have stories ready to tell for mm -hmm. more of those. We really wanted right. that to be a longer series. Um, right now, it just didn't seem to be the time sales-wise, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but me and Aaron just are so proud of that book, and so again, we are. Nothing is ever permanent. Are you and Aaron working on anything else right now together? We were talking about it. I think he just texted me last night and made a joke about what we should work on at some point. So <laughs> I will. I will. The thing is, is I have been very, very lucky with the people who have. Uh, who I've worked with to draw books with me. Although, if you did the I Hate Fairyland, that would be a great little just vignette, two pages of you and him doing Bully Wars meets I Hate Fairyland. Uh, man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> if I could talk Aaron into it, if I ever if I ever brought it back as an ongoing, he'd be such a perfect person just to draw the whole thing. <laughs> you know, his work is so strong. Um, but yeah, Aaron, Aaron and I, I could see us easily working together again sometime in the future for sure. I love that guy as an artist. I love that guy as a friend. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, he, he's not getting rid of me anytime soon. Now, how did you and now how did you and Jorge come together on Middle West? I met Jorge um, when I went down to speak at SCAD once, um, okay. and him and his now wife um, Morgan came down and met me. And I think CB was there too, maybe. Um, and, and CB didn't snatch him up because that means he's not. I know. Well, we did, and he was very, very good. And I kind of kept in touch with him, and we'd run in, into each other here and there. And I, I remember emailing him years ago, or I ran into him at a con. I can't remember. We might have been here in Seattle or something. But I remember 